Avot, Mishnah, Pirki Avot. We're now on the end of Here we go. These are all things that Hillel said. Hillel Azakin. And after we finish with what Hillel says, we're going to go to his main pupil, number one pupil, which was Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Okay, but meanwhile, with learning from Hillel, and Hillel has some, has some really amazing advice to give us over here. Okay, one of the things he advised us, the, the, the Hillel's started speaking the Mishnah from Hillel. We started quoting him in the end of Mishnah Dalad, the fourth Mishnah. Again, we are in the second chapter of Pirkei Avos. And we are now on the sixth Mishnah. Sixth Mishnah. Even though I think we're on the end of the fifth Mishnah. Let's do the fifth Mishnah. Lo call a marba b'schora machkim. Not everyone that deals in business will become smart. Let's look and see what this says. Rashi, the, the Kahati. Do we have it there? No, 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 no. No, no, that's, we don't want that. We don't need that. Come on. There it is. There it is. Mishnah before. The Mishnah before that. There it is. Good. Okay. That's right. Right at the end of the Mishnah. See? Lo kol amarabe b'schora machim. Not everyone that works in business will become wise. What happened? Yeah, that's right. Very good. Let me move this here. <clears throat> what does it mean? Call a marba b'schora. Anyone who works in business will be wise. Anyone who works too much in business, he won't be able to be wise. Why? Because he's always busy the Asakov in his business, the Ein Libu Panoi, and his heart is not free, Lasok Batora, to learn Torah. The Kain Dorshu at Akatuv, and that's what it says, the Lo Mavi Mavir, the Abraham, he. The Torah is not on the other side. This is what the Tanya is based on, right? Korav Elecha Dover Mood says, don't say that the Torah is on the other side of the sea. What does it mean on the other side of the sea? Why would you think it's on the other side of the sea? It says, because a lot of people, in order to make money, they travel on the other side of the sea. Ain't a Torah mitsuya b'mahalachim Ebrayam. The Torah is not found by people who make these long travels. Lo b'sachranim, lo b'tkarim. Not in people that do business, and not in... Tagarim is also another type of what is a, a businessman, a person that the salesman. In the Gomorrah it says, in other words, people that travel far away over the other side of the sea, and over there they buy, let's say, pearls in India, very cheap, and they bring them back here, and they make a lot of money, but they also waste a lot of time. They say, Sha'alu Anshe Alexandria, they asked Anshe, and the people of Alexandria asked Rabbi Yoshua ben Hanania, what should a person do in order to become wise? Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanania said to the Jews of Alexandria, Yarbi Yeshiva, sit down and learn Torah, the me'at b'schora, and minimize how much business you do. Do business, but minimize it. Torah is the most important thing. <clears throat> and that's one thing that Hillel said. Another thing that Hillel said, the makam she'en anashim, the place where there are no people, try to be a man. Makam she'en anashim, if there are no people there that you can learn with <coughs> Torah, he wants to refer everything back to learning Torah. If there are no people to learn Torah with, then you should, Ishtadel, you should learn Be'ish on your own. according to your ability, in order that you will become an Ish, you'll become a mensch, you'll become Kolomer. In other words, Baal Chachma so that you will also acquire wisdom 
and good character, character traits. Some people say, what does it mean you should try to be a person? But in a person, in a place where there are no people. Yes, some people say, in a place where there are no people to work, in a place where there's no one to help the congregation, in other words, something has to be done, then you should be the person to do it. Some people say this is referring to Torah, a place where there's no one to learn Torah with and learn alone. Other people say, no, this is referring to if there's no one to help others, if there's something in the congregation that has to be done and no one else does it, right, to worry about the education of the children, to worry about the old people, to worry about the men, to worry about the women, to worry about Torah learning, if there's no one else doing it, and then don't just hide yourself away and take care of yourself. <clears throat> but what you should be the one that does it. All right, here we have an interesting one. Let's look and see if we can go back up to the Mishnah again. Hillel. Hillel, he says, go to the next Mishnah. <clears throat> okay. Av who also he, Hillel. He, Ra Golgolis, he saw a skull, human skull. Shetzafa al Paneamayim floating on the water. Omar Law, he said to the skull, Al dateft, because you have drowned someone else, atfuch, someone drowned you. Vesov metapayach, and the people who drowned you, yetafun, they will be drowned. In other words, because you murdered others, as therefore you got murdered, and those people who murdered you, they'll in the end get murdered themselves. Mafia. They're talking about the mafia. Everybody kills everybody else. And everybody, the, the killers themselves get killed. That's the way it was in Russia, in communist Russia. <clears throat> they, they killed people. And other people killed them. Anyway, he saw this skull, and somehow or other he knew who it was. Now, there are some places where it says that he knew who this skull was. It doesn't say, does it say over here. No, it doesn't say over here. It doesn't say here. But there are other places where he says that he knew who this skull belonged to. One second, I read this once, and <clears throat> I forgot it here. Let's see if I can find it. It was like the skull of who? There we go. Number three. Uh, oh, yeah, it's falling apart. Excuse me one second. Here. Okay, let me see if I can find this. No. Let's see. No, I'm sorry. I have to look it up later. I thought that I saw somewhere <clears throat> that who was this skull belonged to. I can't remember. <clears throat> okay, it belonged to some king or some important. Anyway, the skull belonged to an evil person, and he said, Because you have killed people, that's why you got killed. Let's look at the, and those people who killed you, in the end, they will be killed. Let's see what the, uh, the, um, the Kahati says. Mishnah Zu, this Mishnah comes to teach us that anyone who does bad, in the end, it's going to come back to him. There's a wheel of fortune in the world. No one gets away with anything. Like it says, Whatever a person measures out, he gets measured back to him. Nothing happens accidentally. But everything is intended from above. Okay, you can ask the question, what about the people that he killed? You know, all the people that were killed in the Holocaust, and they were all guilty, all the babies? Don't ask. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe there is, I mean, nevertheless, God, it says, it says, Mishpatecha Tahom Rabba. We say in Mincha Shabbos, that God, your judgment is a deep, 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 deep pit. And it's so deep, no one could possibly understand it. But we have to assure ourselves that everything that happens, somehow or other, goes according to some 
either cosmic justice that we can't fathom or it's simple justice you know the 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 the, the Hindus and these people have this thing with karma, you know, whatever you do, it comes back to you, and you don't have to to look so far to see that a lot of times it's true, but also a lot of times it's not true. Okay, it's not true in others through our eyes. We don't see it. A lot of times, the, and we'll see later on, it says, lo biadeno, it's not in our hands, not the peace and the success of the evil people, and not the suffering of the righteous people. You understand that? Oh, let's go. Hu ya Omer, let's do the the... Kahati, he said, Hillel said, what did Hillel say? He saw a skull, he saw a skull floating on the water, Omerlo, and he said to the skull, because because you drowned other people, you were drowned, because you were bad, and you were a thief, and you would kill them, and you would sink them into the river. Very common uh, mafia thing, right? They put, threw people in the river, put whatever it is, chains on their feet or something, throw them in the river. In order, so that no one will see that you killed them. There's no, no body, no evidence. So it won't be revealed. So that's what happened to you. Somebody killed you, and they also hid you. in his head came floating up, who knows how many years later. But don't worry about it. Those people who killed you, in the end, they'll get killed. Those people who killed you, they must have done it illegally also. What's the proof here? You're, you're floating in the water. What, what's a skull floating in the water for? They will be they will all yitufun. They will be also be drowned. She yitbu also him. Kilo hayata rashut lahargacha. They didn't have the permission to kill you only in court. Laharog lo beitin. A person that kills without going to beitin, he gets killed. Velo masarcha kodesh buruchu biadam sherotzeach. And God did the velo masarcha. God did not give you in your hand. They didn't. God did not allow people to kill you. Only because that bad things happen through, through bad people. And the, because therefore, those people who kill you, afterwards, that God in the end will demand repayment and he'll take it out on those who killed you. That's what it says. Whatever a person does, he gets paid back for. What are we going to be doing oh. next? Oh, oh. So you really go. Uh, and the yell that, and the, uh, <laughs> whatever a person does, he gets back. <laughs> and whatever a person does, he will be found. Next, we'll learn the laws of milk and meat. But let's do a little bit more of this Mishnah. Let's do Mishnah number seven. Who are you, Omer? Hillel used to say, okay, are you with me? Here we go, Mishnah number seven. <laughs> really startled me. It said, who are you, Omer? Marba Basar Marba Rima. I couldn't figure out where the voice was coming from. It was like Matan Torah. Om Marba Basar Marba Rima. A person that adds, that has a lot of meat. In other words, a person that gets fat, so he'll add a lot of worms. You make yourself fat, you eat a lot in your lifetime, you make the worms happy. After you die, the worms get a big meal. Marba Nechassim, if you have a lot of properties, you become a rich person, right? Very nice, get rich. Is Marba Daiga. You increase your worries, right? You increase your worries. You're wondering what's happening to your properties in, in, in France and in England and in Florida and this. You're always worrying about, your telephone is always ringing. <clears throat> Marba Nashim, a person that has a lot of women. Now, according to Torah, a person can get married to more than one woman. If a person has more than one wife, Marba Chashafim, it says that it increases witchcraft. I don't know if that's true nowadays. Maybe it is. I don't know. But it used to be that women had a certain inclination to witchcraft. And here he says, and one of the reasons is because all the women 
are all vying for his attention. You have a lot of women, so they all want to be to get his attention. So they resort to witchcraft and all sorts of things in order to source all sorts of uh, charms in order to charm their one husband and uh, they, they have to share with all these other wives. Marbashvachos, <clears throat> if you have a lot of women working in the, how do you say, handmaidens, Marbazima, if you add a lot of, have a lot of, if you have a lot of wives, so usually each one of them wants a handmaiden to work with her. If so, this adds on a lot of not nice things, a lot of decadence, because these women are all free and nobody's watching them, etc. Marba Avarim, if you have a lot of male servants, Marba Gezel, then you increase thievery. Servants steal. They're in your house all the time. And to take a little plate, put it in their pocket. We'll learn the, tomorrow, we'll learn the uh, Kahati on this. Marba Torah, now let's see, here are some good things. What if you increase, the more Torah you have, Marba Chaim, you increase life. Marba Yeshiva, the more that you sit and learn Torah, Marba Chachma, you increase wisdom. Marba Eitza, the more people you take advice from, Marba Tavuna, the more understanding that you get. Marba Tzedakah, if you increase giving charity, Marba Shalom, you increase peace in the world. Marba Shem Tov, Kana Shem Tov, if you have a good name, reputation, Kana La'atzmo, then you have really acquired something for yourself. If you have a good name, worth more than money, etc. Kana Lo Devrei Torah, and if you learn Torah, not only do you have a good name for yourself in this world, but if you learn Torah, then this is something which lasts also even after a person dies in heaven. And we'll talk, we'll do these uh, explanations from the Kahati, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's learn a little bit of Basar